you all of a sudden find out there are 25 admitted patients who are unwell, waiting in hallways in the emergency department, needing a bed. You find out that the ambulances are backed up in the ambulance garage, needing to offload a patient. And you've now had patients staying in eMERGE for 25, 30, 40 hours on a stretcher when really they need a bed. Is the kind of incidences that really drive you to want to do things differently. And the command center is really our way of trying to change that environment. Imagine running an airport without an air traffic control tower. Imagine if ground control, flight ops, crew management, terminal ops, and scheduling all worked in silos. That's how we ask our hospitals to run. We don't know what exactly is going on in surgery, in medicine, in eMERGE, because we all work in our own little hubs and we know only what's happening where we're working and not the bigger picture. So I think the command center will clear out a lot of the walls between programs. The barriers to getting to our patients in a timely fashion are simply around identifying who needs what kind of treatment at what particular time. The goal is really to provide the right treatment to the right patient in the right part of the emergency department. Planning around that is an enormous challenge and um, we work at that every day. The Johns Hopkins Hospital in Baltimore recently opened their command center to address similar challenges at their 1200 bed main campus. And the purpose of this center is really to help manage the flow of patients into and through the hospital. That's what's new and different here. It's not just the command center, it's an entirely different approach to managing day-to-day -day operation. There are a lot of people here in the center that work together. Uh, previously, they were not able to share that information as quickly or as efficiently, and now we're able to do that at, at great speed. So our command center will be built in 4,500 square feet of space that we have been able to repurpose. There will be 15 to 20 people who currently work in flow of patients. They will have 25 screens on a wall that all of them will be facing. These screens will have analytic data on it. Some of it will be as simple as a camera into the waiting room in the emergency department so we can see when it's busy or not. And others will be part of the 16 different analytical frames that have been created that really shine a light on where our problem areas are. The other piece of the command center is actually all of the process re-engineering and the procedures that you have to build around it so that you know what to do when something's not working right. When that analytic is telling you you have a problem, what do you do about that? Well, there's a lot of thinking behind that. The command center that we are building for Humber River actually has three generations. Phase one is patient flow and patient care logistics. And for this, a series of indicators have been selected. Some of them are as simple as a camera in the triage room of the emergency department to show how busy it is. Others are much more detailed, showing whether we're waiting for a bed to be cleaned, whether we're waiting for a bed to become available, a delayed discharge, anything that may delay the smooth flow of patients between departments. Phase two, this is really about Humber River Hospital's commitment to becoming a high reliability hospital. We have clinical pathways and care maps that identify specific care for patients. The command center will allow us to monitor the patient's progress through the care map and intervene to assist when a potential issue is identified. The third and very exciting component is home monitoring. Increasingly, hospitals are wanting to discharge patients to their home where they are always more comfortable, but some of these patients require monitoring or assistance in managing their care at home. The command center provides an opportunity for us to link to that patient through wearable technology or perhaps a telephone call to them, some way of the hospital knowing that the patient is having a problem managing at home. And instead of waiting until their condition deteriorates and they need to come to the emergency department, we can communicate with the community providers, have them check on the patient, bring the patient back to an elective clinic appointment, but help them to manage, stay at home longer, and avoid an emergency department visit.
I want to thank our staff and physicians for their assistance in the development of the Command Centre. Their work has positioned us to take the next step in our digital journey.